straight to the Berwick Planning Board. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, June 6, 2019. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we start the meeting, Niles asked me if we would have a moment of silence. Today's the 75th anniversary of D-Day, so, um, you know, if it wasn't for uh, what happened 75 years ago, we might not be having these meetings right now under our uh, democracy. So a brief moment of silence, please. All right, thank you very much. All right, introduction of board members. We have our alternate member, Noah Cobb, here. Our um, regular member Sean Winston's absent tonight. We have uh, Niall Shore, the vice chair. We have Paul Bovere, regular member, Nicole Fecto, and then Mike LaRue, an alternate member. So because Sean is absent tonight, uh, we'll have uh, Noah as a voting member this evening. I'd like to open up the public comment session. It's open to any resident or property owner in Berwick to come forward to talk about anything that's under the purview of the planning board and the planning department. Feel free to come forward and state your name and your address, please. Dave, I, I do have a comment. Can I make a comment as a member Do you want to make public? it now or do you want to wait till informational items? I want to make it now. All right, sure. Well, you want to go to the, I would go to the podium. I'm going to go to the podium. Because it isn't public. Just state your, your name and your address for the record. Sure. Um, Nicole Fecto, Wingate Lane in Berwick. So um, on Tuesday, Paul and I actually both attended the selectmen's meeting, and at one point during the meeting, there was a, we attended because there was some discussion online about what was actually happening, and there was a small parcel of land that's being, uh, or a purchase and sale was, I think, uh, accepted by the selectmen for the future fire department location which is not an approved application yet, but they were purchasing that. And um, somebody was saying online that something very different was happening. So we went to go get that cleared up to find out what was actually going on. And during that discussion, we wanted it entered into the public statement that the approval wasn't given for that conditional use yet for the fire department. And one of the selectmen said to Paul, actually, well, that's your job is to get that put through. And I wanted to clear up for the public, and as a member of the public, what our job actually is. And our job isn't to get things put through, no matter who the applicant is. And if it's the town or the fire department or a private citizen, everybody has to go through the same process, hypothetically. Um, our job is to uphold the land use ordinance and the comprehensive plan for the town of Berwick and to make sure that every application comes through, goes through the same um, basically checklist to make sure that it complies with the ordinances that the town, the people of the town of Berwick have voted on and that we've worked very hard to um, go through. So I just wanted to clear that up since it was on television and therefore on record that uh, a selectman told us that that's our job is to push that through and that's not our job. And that was my only public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Can I add one thing, Nicole, to uh, the, the item that was being discussed at the time was one of the warrant articles for the purchase of land as part, part of the Esterbrook School, as part of the old Wedgwood Tavern. And the way the warrant article is spelled out, written out, it implies that you're buying the lot of the Wedgwood. Yes. And I wanted to be very clear that the town is not buying the lot, they're buying for a low amount of money just a sliver of that land so that we can have a uh, public easement to walk between Estbrook and the ball field. It's just a sliver of land. It I'm is glad not that you were real clear about that. Well, I, I pushed it through. That's right. <laughs> All right, thank you. This is public comment session. Feel free to come forward to the podium if you have anything. <clears throat> Seeing nobody come forward. Going once, going twice, close the public comment session. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the May 16, 2019 meeting. And you are not here on that meeting, Nicole. Correct. I will, I will abstain from this vote. 
What do you got? You got a bunch of stuff under. No, I, I've got a lot of markings here, but only one is significant, and it's um, it's item four on, I believe, the fourth page, um, and it's a conditional use application for uh, 398 School Street. And uh, there's one little confusing thing when I read it. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm, again, too picky. But it says, Dustin Morrill's in attendance to represent Mr. Springer. Mr. Morrill said Mrs. Springer is going to purchase land that a structure on his property is infringing upon. It is not on his property. It is on the abutting property. So just to clarify that, uh, you can actually strike out a couple words <coughs> and you could say that to purchase land that a structure is infringing that upon. That his structure, right, how about that? Of his. that or his, his stru structure right. is infringing on yeah. the abutting property. Okay. There's just a couple ways to do it. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it implies that the infringing building is on his property, I think. Correct. Other than that, it's pretty darn close. Any other perfect. changes? Okay, so the motion will be for approval of the minutes as amended. I'll make a motion that they be approved as we amended. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Abstaining? Okay, that's four yes and one abstaining. Next on the agenda is conditional use application medical marijuana production facility, 398 School Street, R3 zone with frontage on Route 9. Applicant is David Springer. I'll turn it over to the town planner. Certainly. Good evening, everyone. Um, I do not have a memo for you on this, however, um, I can tell you that the other day I did receive an email um, from the applicant's representative um, indicating that the plantings had been done behind the, pro the proposed building um, as well as a purchase and sale for the purchase of that abutting property that was just discussed in the previous minutes. Um, I asked the applicant's representative to make sure that pictures were available for you. I don't know um, if that is sufficient or not, or whether you're going to want to do another site walk, as I indicated to him that, especially if you didn't have pictures tonight, um, that you might want to be making another site walk to see for yourself how those trees are um, impacting or, or helping to visualize the buffer in that area. Um, also, with the purchase and sales, there is no deed description of that piece of land. It's only noted in the um, P&S of what the tax map and lot number is of that parcel. Um, and my only concern, um, and I'm being ultra conservative on this, it would be that um, where this, even though this is an executed P&S, that if final approvals are granted before the actual purchase or deed, um, is drafted on that piece of property that certainly the applicant, any applicant, not this applicant, but any applicant could walk out the door after they receive their approvals and back out of the deal. Um, so I just raise that as a concern um, for your consideration. Other than that, there's no other issues at this time. Can that be a condition of approval? Uh, it could be. Um, um, I mean, I think it should be a condition of approval. If something happens, you could add meantime, that as a condition of approval. Not that yes, it's going that, to, but that, um, what's the what was the word that we're using tonight? Hypothetically, hypothetically, <laughs> hypothetically <laughs> if one party backs out, I'm then just trying to think of what the wording would be because certainly once you grant an approval, you <clears throat> can't back out of that approval, if you will, unless right. it were the very next meeting and you wanted to have a motion for reconsideration. Could, um, could we condition a certificate of occupancy upon the? A copy of the, d of the deed you being delivered? You could ask for that, yes, and, and I think that there are the other, problem? I think that there are other um, issues that would come into play with the certificate of occupancy <coughs> as discussion gets going tonight, so. Understood, but, yes. but if we made that a part of it, that would at least give us some certainty over the deed question. Y yes. I but why do we need to, um, act that way, why can't we just do it right again and make sure that everything is in order when we approve it? We, we can certainly delay exactly. and, wait, and wait for it to happen. Yeah. Which When's the closing? The At the end of the month, 28th. Yeah, end of June. On or before the 28th, 20, yeah. I think it's the 20, the 28th yeah. Um, and you know, two meetings ago, I think we met, and you guys were uh, wanted to make sure they had filters in all the buildings. 
and um, code enforcement officer inspected them and you wanted shades in all the lamps and he you know he's expected all them and one of them you want to turn because of the abutter that was out here that um, I think he turned it properly um, the, the building was kind of the sticking point last meeting. I think we would have, without that, would have been a little better. Um, yeah. Code? Um. <clears throat> no, you got the microphone right there. Oh. In uh, reference to the lighting, uh, I think that's unresolved at this time. In reference to the uh, uh, filters that were used, uh, all the filters were removed from the uh, grow rooms and each filter was inspected uh, according to the requirements for the uh, purpose they were serving. And, and they were in compliance with the requirements of the ordinance? For the... Uh, the filters? Yes. Now, it, what did you say about the lights? I didn't hear you properly. Uh, resolved or unresolved? Unresolved. Unresolved. How so? Uh, I guess determination as to what uh, some of the terms mean in the ordinance itself. Where we talk about dark skies, where we talk about uh, hoods, where we talk about uh, not seeing the glare or seeing the bulb from uh, the lamp itself. It's still present on the site that we do see those. On the site? On the site. On the site. Not from the road or the abutters? No, we see them from the road. We see them from the abutters. I mean, yes, you're going to have some amount of you're going to have some amount of light that's visible. What, what would you do in your determination if this was your property? What would you do? Just put shields on it. There is shield on. The, sh the shields do not meet the code requirement. Sounds like we need a sight walk. It's only shields that are designed for this light, and of course they they're all over Berwick. They're putting them. Yeah, you're well, they're putting them at the, the uh, school recently. They, they yeah, I had, uh, we had a meeting yesterday with uh, Bill Perry, the state electrical inspector, that inspected that site when it was being built with Joe Roussel. We also had Steve Moulton from Northeast Electric, where we purchased the light fixtures from. He does all the schools, all the parking lots, and a lot of, a lot of buildings, a lot of towns. As a matter of fact, he's doing three locations in the town of Noble, the, the school district of Noble. In your town, those same lights are going in. You know, if you go to Cumberland Farms, you go to uh, Kenny Bunk Savings Bank, you go to any application, this is what you have. So I asked, I asked uh, Dan in front of everybody, it's like, well, who else are you, you know, citing for this violation? If you could see the light coming from the light fixture, it is not a violation. It's only if it's in a path of travel, normal view, you know, like driving down the road, it's in your face, or it's on a butter's property, or the glare. That you have to prove, that you have to show me, and it gets addressed. But these light fixtures aren't that case. Any parking lot, you're gonna see the light, okay? Uh, Cumberland Farms, for example, there's, uh, there's these same lights 10 feet from the road, okay, 10 feet. Yeah, you're 150 feet in? I'm 175 feet in from the gate, and that's a problem. That's supposedly Berwick, is citing for that. Now, how is that, how is that cited as a violation when everybody else that he is not citing for, he's not citing a violation? So how can you just come down on me for my lights and nobody else? And I asked Dan, who have, who, who have you sent these you know, notices to? You know, because they're, they're doing the same thing. Oh, we haven't cited anybody for a violation but you. In eight months, nine months. Well, you've and got like, a butters that are very angry about it. Well, I know that, but you have to you have to say, hey, what's right and wrong here? These are just because they don't like what's there. You can't come down on me for my life fixtures that are everywhere else. So, anyways, I had the state there. I had uh, Steve from uh, Northeast, and they tried to reason with Dan and say, you you're reading the ordinance wrong. It's in it's in normal view. And then it has foot candles that it has to measure if, it, if it's uh, polluting onto somebody's property. That's what you have to determine, which my lights aren't being washed on anybody's property. There's no light. It's, it's impossible. They're, not, they're too far away. It's only because of the glare. It's, it, it's, you can see a candle from two miles, okay? Yeah. 
my light show. It's a secure facility. It's no different than Hannaford's parking lot or the police department or, or anything else or the school. If those lights are on at night, they do the same thing as mine do. So all we're saying is we tried to talk to Dan. It's not a violation. I'm putting these in the schools. So if you have a problem right now and you're citing my lights as a problem, you better go to the school district and let's, let's everybody's doing it. Okay. okay. Has anybody on the board been out there at night? Because I have. I have not. <clears throat> no one's driven by at night? I've driven past and I've seen, I've seen some glare, but I mean, it's not something that would cause remember, me to swerve or anything better. Yeah, I know, like but that, you, this not. is what you need to remember. When you're looking right or left, that ain't yeah. normal view. Yeah. yeah. The statement states yeah, normal, normal view. view is when you're driving. I, I completely agree. I you specifically know. looked because of our previous meeting. Sure. And Absolutely. I happened to be going by there at night. And I was like, I'll take a look while I'm driving by. Sure. Under normal use, I wouldn't turn my head. Yeah, and that's, so. that's where the ordinance states, in normal, normal view. So, and any neighbor that has complained that we know of, we, we'll, he has turned the lights we'll take away care from of them. We, I yeah. already addressed that the last walk. So, again, and I put the shades on. Get a load of this. I put the shades on every one of these lights when I didn't have to. Okay? I didn't have to, and I did it. Just to say, okay, if I do that... Because that's what you guys wanted when you did the site walk. I'll That'll just help. do it. And, you know, that's a $1,200, $1,400 value. So I did it just to have this go away. And then I'm still saying I'm hearing I'm in violation. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, you're going you're gonna to have a lot of problems, you know. I'm more concerned about <clears throat> whether or not can we go, can we go forward tonight with, without a sale yet? We give James a signed purchase and sale. Yeah. I, no, I, I know I have the purchase nothing. and sales. I mean, yeah. No, I know. Well, but the... the just a legal hold the thing. What happens if we approve the application? Somebody backs out then. Well, there's either one or two things, right? The the shed has to be removed as far as you're concerned, correct? That's yeah. the other alternative. It's either he buys it or you remove the shed. Right. Yeah, that's we can write that that's, down. Yeah. I mean obviously obviously you you've seen it. It's not the you know I mean, was it Paul? He came around to you and said it was his shed. You know, it is it is Jack's shed technically. But, you know, it ended up where it was, and he, he ain't going to move it. So, it, you know, that was determined a while ago, obviously, but it needs to be fixed up. It isn't the work that we do is what I'm trying to say. Mm. So it's either we buy the property, if you say it gets, gets uh, rejected or it gets somehow something happens with the sale, put in writing that I have to remove it. But That's, it's not your shed. Well, I'll do whatever it takes to make the problem go away. I'll remove it. He'll want it removed. He'll have to remove it, you know, which I, that means I'll remove it. I understand. You're holding up my project, so I'll, I'll be the one removing it. Well, we're not holding up your project. Well, no, what I'm trying to say is that shed's going to be the holding that up shed, my, That shed is holding up your project, right. correct. Lee J., yeah. what do you think? I'd like to hear from you. Well, under most circumstances, of course, um, a P&S is showing title right or interest in property. And that's what an applicant needs to purchase. And to, we've done this before. Yes. We've approved full applications yes. with that. Um, but you've done full applications in the sense that, you know, you can approve a project that may never get built if they don't end up purchasing the property. In this particular case, you have a shed that is a zoning violation because it's over, it's not in conformance with setbacks and it's on two pieces of property and doesn't belong to the applicant, um, which I thought it did. I didn't realize that it does not belong to the applicant. So, you know, on the one hand, a condition of approval could be granted could as part of the approval that, I was just writing it down, um, that property, that, that the purchase and sale is submitted to the planning board um, be executed by date X or the building remo be removed prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. The complication comes, or could come, where, as, as David just mentioned, it's not his building. Um, so if the guy that owns it says, well, I'm not tearing it down, <laughs> I mean, this, it, it could become a quagmire, but that is certainly an option for you, would be to condition it on the purchase and sale occurring by you know, J June 28th or whatever the date is, that it needs to be executed, or the building be removed. Is half that building on your property? Um, yeah, most of it is. Who's using the building? 
it's kind of like everything. He had stuff in there from the beginning. Right. Who's using it now, though? Because there's there was like fresh concrete yeah, it's, it's there. It's just and... kind of like a catch-all right now. It's where it's, everything's in back. Everything okay. just goes to that point. So your 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 facility uses it. Yeah. It's okay. just for me, more or less. Just that yeah. materials that we don't need just get put back there for. You know. Is there any escrow being held on this purchase and sale agreement? I've already actually paid for the. Uh, it's in the lawyer's hands right now. But there's no money in an escrow account, so it's just a piece of paper with a signature on it. No, I mean, uh, I have a question now. It is actually uh, a little complex because I just heard the shed does not really belong to you. Right. Well, he told um, you that. Directly. And the land it's on is half yours or partially yours, and it's partially his. Let's say you get into a contest with this individual, and he says, "I'm not moving my shed." And I'm not selling you a piece of land for some reason. The no, is, that ain't going to happen, though. No. That, no, no. I'm not worried about that one bit. Because purchase and sales are not guaranteed items. No, that ain't Jack. Yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. That ain't going to happen. Uh, this ain't going to. No, this Jack is, approached him on Yeah, that's it. what I'm saying. I didn't know anything about the shed. I didn't think it was a big deal. You know, it's, you, you I was, thought it was on your property. Well, you know, it, it got moved. I mean, it wasn't anything that it was a, a shock to anybody. It's been a. It's, it's, it's been there. It's just one of those things that was there. It got moved over, like, uh, we'll deal with it later type of issue. I mean, Joey's aware of it. I mean, he, he it was there the whole time. I mean, he's paying taxes on it and stuff, Yeah, too. I'm paying taxes on it even. So, but, you know, that's never been an issue. But I'm, I'm not worried about the sale of the land. I'm not one bit, you know. I like to have the usage. The only thing the usage does is help me go forward with, you know, contracts of people. I've, I've had three people, two of them now have backed out because... This keeps on getting pushed back. Mm. So with the usage, you know, I might as well just wait and just pull everybody off. And this is now, we said this in October. All right, and I think I've been real patient with the things I've gone through with this one particular building. So, you know, I've done everything the town's wanted me to do as far as, you know, you said something to do, I've done it, you know. When do you think that this could be completed, the sale could be completed? By the sales agreement for the for the property will be the end of the end of the month uh, on for the land. But what I'm saying is, I like to know that we can go forward with the building itself because I'm at a I'm at a standstill. I've been. Yeah, this but is actually. But not being able to quite tell somebody I can do this, they're not going to hang around, you know, because yeah. they've been saying I've been saying this now for a month and a half with them. So, oh, we should have it this one. We should have it this one. You know, so. Yeah. And, and I realize the shed is, is quite a ways away from building number five. I, I, can't, I can't believe a shed is holding me up over this. I mean, for example, even with the buffer is, and we put all those trees in because I thought that's what you'd like to do. And that's the only crevice that had no, no woods in it. And, and it wasn't because we cut anything down. It's just that's the way it was. But, I mean, Dustin will verify that the shed on that land, on that abut, that, that neighbor right there, you know, there's pictures that I took that show now cars behind that shed. Yeah. And the shed itself is even on my property, okay? So, I mean, I'm planting trees to make him happy because you want me to do that, obviously. And he has everything on my property, including now three vehicles, which Dan can vote for. I showed him the pictures. So, I mean, so be it. I don't care. I mean, let him stay there. I don't want him to move the shed. I don't want him to. But that's just a kind of a situation that we're at where that ain't a problem, but my shed is. You know what I'm saying? Just for this usage. It's kind of, yeah, it, that's, you know, what's it, that's a civil suit if I go after him to move his shed, but you're holding me up over a shed that... We're not I'll, holding you up. Well, we, you know, we, need the, we need this to well, be absolutely to complete, and it needs to be legal. Because this has been dragged on and dragged on, and I'm willing to do anything like I've already proven. Well, if so, your attorney already has the money, why hasn't it just changed hands already? Well, it's doing all the title search and all that, okay. I believe. Yeah, you, you know, can't. I mean, just, it just... Oh, you yeah. should know. You can't do a closing like... You can tomorrow. do it in seven. I don't know. I've done one in seven days before. I've so. dealt with his attorney, and she probably right. can. <laughs> right, so we have a couple different options. There's two things that we could do. We can we can table this application once again, or we can move forward with the condition of approval, as Lee J suggested, which does leave something open in, in the event that one party does back out. But those are the two options that we're faced with right now, so we should probably look at those. So I've got some wording for you. What do you have? So... A condition that could be structured would say that the property in the submitted purchase and sales agreement must be executed on or before June 28th and the executed deed be submitted to the planning department or the shed be removed prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the building under current review. That works. Yeah. 
Niles? Uh, I'm concerned about the date only because right. my experience, uh, closing schedules for a date don't always happen on that date. Can we go to so with July a little flexibility 31st? on the date, I'm otherwise fine. Well, sure, whatever, the, whatever you want it to be. Right. Yeah, or so within 60 days of, well, let's say July they're 31st. Gonna, yeah, they're going to they're gonna want to, they're not going to get their occupancy permit until that's closed. So, right. Right. yeah. On or before July 31st? Right, Dano? Yeah. Okay. It all depends. <laughs> Still have compliance issues with the zoning ordinance. Well, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's deal with <coughs> one issue at a time. Okay. But we, so, so then it would say, again, the property in the submitted purchase and sales uh, agreement must be executed on or before July 31st and the executed deed be submitted to the planning department or the shed be removed prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the building upon, um, under current review. Yes. Did you have something? Yeah. Um, hold on, where are we? There we go. I assume what we are arguing about is Section 7.4 glare. Yes. Am I on, a, on, on the lighting issue, yes. On the lighting issue. Yes. So what I would like to do, there are a number of sentences. Yes. I would like for us to go through every one of them. Yes. And decide whether we think it complies or not. Sure. Um, so let me read the first one. This is, again, Section 7.4 glare. Lighting may be used which serves security, safety, and operational needs, but which does not directly or indirectly produce harmful effects on abutting properties or which would impair the vision of a vehicle operator on adjacent roadways. It seems to me that what we are hearing satisfies that. Do we have disagreement or agreement on that question? I'm not so the standard so is know. harmful like effects to, yeah. on abutting properties. Yeah. I, so not, we the have question is not for this sentence. Yeah. The question isn't, isn't can it be seen? Right. Is, it, is it a harmful effect? All right. So if in a butter, and we did have one, I believe, that said it's coming right through. She showed us the lights and it's. And they adjusted said, that light. She said specifically it was coming like right through their their kitchen window, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but what I've heard, and perhaps. I'm misunderstanding, is that that problem has been resolved. Correct. Yes, that, that through, be, so that as a result of this, the hood is, is, is that the only complaint we had from the butter? I don't think we have any issues with Route Nine or School Street. No. Yeah, no. no. That that's, right, so that's the only if one. I'm being totally honest, and I said this at the time, <clears throat> I don't know how light coming through a kitchen window is harmful in any which way. You don't sleep in your kitchen. It's not keeping you up at night. Well, and, and we do have shades in the world. Yeah, I, it's, I just don't, I, I don't know if it could be harmful, even if there was glare. Yeah. I don't know if it could Unless be the light, of course, is aimed in yeah. that direction, and it's like a headlight, of which we it, do care about, yes. pointing in Understood, people's but windows. That's, but I, and and I, I, I don't have not know heard, if that's the case. I, I have we, not we heard that this is like a headlight was. glaring in somebody's yeah. house. Uh, so that's sentence number one. All right, now let's deal with sentence number two. Um, lighting fixtures shall be shielded or hooded so that the lighting elements are not exposed to normal view by motorist pedestrians or from adjacent buildings. Normal view by motorist pedestrians or from adjacent buildings. I think that's not applicable in this case. And it's not visible, I mean, from the road, to be sure. Okay. Um, well, and, and we, uh, a member has buildings, told us he drove by and did not. Yeah. And adjacent okay. buildings, I think that applies more to a, kind of a suburban uh, environment, not in a tree area like this. And normal view isn't staring out your window in at night to look for the light and be annoyed by it. Okay. As he pointed out, it's 170 feet from the road. Yeah. How far is it from the, the abutter that had mentioned it was an issue? It's quite that's a ways. A, yeah, it's, it's another 200 and something feet. Two, yeah, it's quite a ways. Yeah, that, and I could wooded. see where she was. Heavy yeah. wooded, yeah. too. But so that, I don't that was before the leaves, too. We just turned All right. it. And, so, and, that, and that there's that one more involved. sentence, which I'm not sure does apply or not, but let me read it. Direct or indirect illumination shall not exceed 0 0.5 foot candles upon abutting residential properties. 
Now let me ask Dan, is that, is that a problem, zero point? Is, does this, in your opinion, exceed 0 0.5 foot candles? Yes, it does. And how did you determine that? Well, 0 0.5 is about a full moon. And when you look at the site, we also have uh, test meters for it. We and and have you used test meters? I, ha I have not used this one. Okay. I, in that sentence, it's not of the issue that I'm concerned with. You, you're concerned with issue number, sentence one or two, or both? With the uh, shielding and hooding of the light. And, we and, and the question of normal view. The, the ordinance states that the, the luminaire shall be sh uh, shield or hood. If you can see the luminaire, then it does not have a proper shield or a hood on it. It says, so what it says not it exposed to normal, normal view. to normal view by p motorists, pedestrians, or from adjacent buildings. I mean, buildings. if you're standing underneath no. it, you're going to be able to right. see it. That's no what it what. says. The sentence that reads uh, hooded or shielded, there's a specific shield or hood that is used for lighting. And you can go on and see the international lighting code, what lights are acceptable, what lights are not acceptable that meet that criteria. I, I, I have and no we, doubt that you're correct, but that's not what the ordinance says in, as in my reading of it. I, I've read the sentence. I'll be happy to read it a third time. Please do. Um, lighting fixtures shall be shielded or hooded so that the lighting elements are not exposed to normal view by motorists, pedestrians, or from adjacent dwellings. What I've heard from a member of the board is that in his experience and in his opinion, that the lights are not exposed to normal view by a motorist, because that was his position as a motorist. The light I, element. Yes, that light is correct. Element. Um, I live not far from there. Not a whole lot of pedestrians in that neck of the woods. Um, <laughs> Um, the so last, the question is, abutting, abutting is, is it yeah. normal view by adjacent dwellings? So why don't we well, take a look? We had a no, but we've, had, we've already had one yeah, person we'll come the, in. That, we didn't do it from the means, abutting. What that means is view. light has to be. I thought you walked over to the abutting property, no? I don't believe so. See, light, Some light, people did. I, I, we saw the, the property, but yeah. I mean. I mean, I didn't think it, it was, that it, it was, was far enough so that it really wouldn't be an issue. The, light, the, the light would have to these these poles, the the down lights, which which we explained to Dan yesterday, they they throw out ten feet in back of the pole. They're designed to have cutoffs, ten feet behind the pole, and then it's forty feet completely all the way around. Yeah. So the light is impossible to to reach even my gate. It you know where, from where even the pole the pictures you had or he had, it shows the light stopping at the gate. It's not out in the road. You can just it's, see it shining down. It's perfect for my situation where the gate yeah, has to safety. be lit up. Okay. So, I mean, we're, this is like semantics now. We're just, you know. Well, see it's, what it is. And well, hold, on, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on a second, dude. Um, how do we want to move forward on this? Now, there's just like three options. Now I hear possibly a site walk at night, um, <clears throat> possible table or possible, you know, we, we already agreed upon or had a consensus on the condition of, of approval with the purchase and sales agreement. So... Now we're talking about lighting. Is this what we're going to be hold up on? What, what is the, how does the board want to move forward? Can we, um, since the attorney already has the money, can we have financial proof for the purchase of the, I, I just want, I mean, you I don't know. a copy of my check? <clears throat> well, I, I don't know, something, like something. Well, there's no escrow being to, held on the property. There's, it's just a piece of paper. I mean, I could, I could give that to James right. next week if that's what Yeah, I, I would agree that, I don't. I personally. I don't like I, that's not a problem. I don't think the uh, the lighting. It, it's an issue, uh, according to what Dan is saying, and I think we can resolve it. Uh, but I'm more worried about something falling through with the purchase and sale, well, where you. Well, yeah, I mean, you run into budding things property. are going to happen. Stuff, I stuff mean, like that happens I mean, all the time. I mean, yeah, and I understand, but I can't see how. I mean, he wants to sell it. He wants the money, but regardless. You can never see what happens. But, yeah, Paul, are you satisfied with the language that Lee J has suggested to yeah. deal with that issue? Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of that is when something somebody doesn't come up with a financing. Paul, are you satisfied with that? With, with, the, with the language? Yeah, I yeah, still feel uncomfortable. The language sounds fine, but I know purchase and sales fall through for a lot of reasons. And we've waived and financial and, and capacity and on this on yeah, this conditional yeah. use, FYI. Yeah. There's a waiver for financial capacity. So that's that's why I would like to see some kind of 
It's financial. Nice, nice to get if things in order. Or if it falls through, though, he still has to move the shed. Yeah, he's going to get rid of We need financial I'm capacity for that, and we've waived the financial shed, capacity. We destroy it. We do whatever. Whatever is required if, if we don't purchase the property. Yeah, plan B. You're going to remove part of the shed that's on well, your property. Well, you know, I mean, obviously, it's, he's, he's infringing on my property as well. So, obviously, we're both in a situation. Yeah. So, it's going to be taken care of. I mean, hold me responsible. But now we're also in a situation we don't have we don't have facts of findings or conditions of approval. We don't have staff notes either this evening. So if, if this application was going to go in that direction, we would just have to go for approval of the application, then come back in two weeks, and then go ahead and, and vote on the other things. Yeah, because we don't. And have I would to. like to see the findings of fact on this one. Yes, yeah. um, I've been taking some notes here that yeah. I mean. The, the lighting issue is the sticky issue at this point, and the findings of fact are going to show during in the lighting piece how you have gone through each portion of the sentence and discussed each portion and how it impacts your decision on that. Good. All right, I didn't. I didn't want to do this, but uh, it's motion the table. <coughs> I'll second. Okay. Discussion. No discussion on the table anymore. Well, we, can we have a, we can have discussion of re my reason why. Well, and then we can vote on it. Why don't you withdraw your motion? Okay, my, I'm going to so withdraw my. I, I will withdraw my motion. You want to make sure you do. This I will withdraw right, my motion, and the reason is because there's two. Because this is going to get too sticky, and there's that we don't have a consensus to get this this through tonight. I could how just tell. Just, how about just denying me then? How about just denying? No. Me? Do you want to do you want to spend all the come. application fees again? You know, uh, let it, let it go through the appeals process, lawyers, and all that, because this is getting ridiculous, honestly. There's, well, we, we, there's don't a, have, we don't have the findings of fact. Um, Which is not your fault. Right. So we, we, even if we were inclined to do this tonight, we can't because we don't have the necessary materials. We will in two weeks, yes. from what I understand from Lee Yes. So we're talking about two weeks from now. Um, two more weeks. I am pretty comfortable saying nobody knows what the vote of this board is going to be right now. <laughs> That's why I just wish you would just, that's what I'm saying. Well, well, no, more, I'm, no more dragging out, just in, vote In no. two weeks, you will have a vote. You know, this in is two weeks, it'll be the 20th, and you'll be just a week away from closing right. on your property, so you'll be well, that and, much and, closer. Well, and I, I think Lee, this Lee is, J has that, I think, problem under control, but mm -hmm. we, you know, in two weeks, we'll decide yes or no. Mm. See if we can bump the closing um, up. And so is tabling the way to say we do this in two weeks, or is it? You know, in the, in the law, we'd call it a continuance. We could call it a tabling. I don't care what, you know, yeah, what, what is the right phrase here? Um, postpone, we're not, we're not postponing. Well, that's, that's tabling. I mean, we're not, no. we're not, we're not ready to, yeah, I mean, we're not. We're not ready to act. We're not ready to act, but it, this thing is, it, things are still moving forward. We're not saying it, it's. No longer, or somebody, or somebody could, no, or somebody could make somebody. We could do that, or somebody can make a motion right now to approve the application or deny the application. I, well, given given say, the issues that. we have here, I exactly. would be very. I personally, what, would what be is the problem with tabling it? Doing it without the written I've been tabled how many times now? That's the thing. You haven't been I just tabled wanna, at the problem all. With you? you know what? You know everything's been dragged on, dragged on. Like last, the last meeting, Dustin represented me. It was because of the shed, and then nobody's yep. nobody wanted to talk anymore. Right, right. A but lot of this could have been did, addressed. Did then. we know the shed was going to be there? I didn't no. know it was. I a mean, big this deal. is why it's been That's why I just rather you guys just vote on it and yeah. deny it, deny it, get it over. But, but why <coughs> deny? Well, you mission. don't always get in life what you want. I realize that, sir. I, this and, is my and how many so I, I certainly don't think we are in a position pretty, to deny tonight, because we we can neither approve or deny without findings of fact. Bingo. That's so what I either was way, to say. there's not going to be a final decision tonight. Period. End of story. There will be one, presumably in two weeks, unless something new happens. Correct. And I will. My. I guess I don't know if I. I my plan would be to, based on how you're going, would be to prepare findings of fact for an approval, and break down the lighting based on the discussion that you folks had tonight on each portion of each sentence, regarding how you came to the determination that the lighting was I, not a factor. I do have one question with the lighting. That was approved back two years ago with the state and the code department then, okay? 
Same Why ordinance. is it all of a sudden now in violation? I don't have a problem with the lighting. I, and I got an because you had an abutter that came and, I know, and but caused you fix it. But the problem is fixed. Otherwise, that. we, That's we, yeah. that has Otherwise we wouldn't have had an issue. We had never had a site visit there. Yeah. For one thing. I, I understand all that, but it has been inspected by the state and by the code department. Dep well, that so has nothing uh, to do the, with The it. only thing I'm going to say about that, Dave, and I'm, I'm working with these guys to prepare findings of fact that would approve your project. But, but, the state isn't going to use the town's local ordinance for their review to see if you've met a standard. They're going to look at the lighting and go, yeah, okay, that's appropriate for whatever they have for their standards. With your code department, don't forget that. Relevant to the code department, there was a different code officer yeah. sitting in that chair who may have a different can, interpretation can you, let me than ask the current you, because code This is, this is officer. something I want to know. Can you, after giving the approval of something, go back and cite somebody for a violation? Sure. That's been, sure, things you change. Can, Absolutely. You can do that. Things, things change. Nothing's changed, though. Same ordinance. That's what I'm saying. Now, nothing's changed. It's, it's the same thing. Well, well, can, can, I, understand can I, I suggest, and you certainly I'm just are curious. in no obligation I'm not being a wise to act. take yeah. my suggestion, but rather than stand there and tell us I'm asking why the denial that you don't have yet is inappropriate. Why don't you wait two weeks and see what happens? Well, I kind of have no choice. You won't even give me a denial. <laughs> <laughs> has anybody up I'm here? Asking you right now. Has anybody up here said I'm anything about? You. Has anybody up here said anything about denying your application? You don't understand, sir. No, no, no. I mean, Answer my question. Has anybody up here said anything about denying your application? I just want to move on with this. You don't get it. I just want to move on with this one way or the other, and I'll take the denial. Okay, that's what I'm telling you. Can, can we try it one more time? Has anybody up here said anything about denying your application? I don't want to wait any longer, Niall. I've been through this and through this and through this. We started this three months ago, okay? That's all I'm getting at. I'm getting tired of coming here. I'm sorry, but that's it. I want you to say yes or no, and I walk out and the in, door. And in two weeks, we will say yes or no. We can't I say guess anything that's the before case. then. I guess we that's the case I'm in. We don't yeah. have the appropriate I'm sorry materials to, get, I'm sorry to, be, to do that. You know, Frank, with you, but that's the way it is. I just, this is getting, this is getting ridiculous, honestly. Well, uh, you know, we we don't guarantee your happiness. We just guarantee that we will rule <laughs> on whether or not you're in. You are. You are. You're so we need to move. Yeah, we need to. Okay we, need to on, we need to move on. We need to move on. The only thing I would say for <laughs> this board is that, um, it, if you were going to look at, rather than a denial on this application, the applicant ought to request withdrawal of the application. That's what I would. Well, then yeah, think. you can request that. Otherwise, yeah. I would suggest. No, I, I think we're, really we're, we're way I ahead of ourselves. I need a denial to move. We are way I, ahead I, of ourselves. I don't think the applicant. Why don't we come I back in two weeks? I make a motion to table this application. Second. Uh, okay, that's it. Right. Application is tabled. Well, no, don't we get the vote on it. Oh wait, whoa, whoa, hold whoa, on, don't hold on. Vote on it? Hold on, you're right. All right. A second, Mr. All Peter, in favor. Don't we get to vote on the freaking thing? No. <laughs> All right. I got a little heated. I'm sorry. So you don't need to call me a dictator. <laughs> All right. All in favor of uh, All in favor of tabling the application. That's one, two, three, all, and all opposed. Okay, that's four to one. Okay. All right, next on the agenda. <laughs> Somebody should have duct taped Lee J to his seat before this <laughs> meeting. <laughs> I still, 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 <laughs> still have a couple of more agenda <laughs> items. That was the right thing to do, Dave. Lee J, can I make a request in the future? Certainly. That we, we no longer are be put in the position of having an application where there's nothing left to do but vote on it unless the, the findings are I done. I would love to be able to do that on every application. So I can't guarantee that that would be the well, case. Well, but we can guarantee we won't schedule it, can't we? Um, yes. And That's I what I mean. I'm not, I'm not telling you to move faster than yeah. you can. I'm telling you not to schedule until you're done. And That's all I'm I want to make sure James hears that as well because the applications come to him and then they're just forwarded to me to well, act. I, I don't think, you know, me scheduling too. it without being in the position, to, I mean, this is bizarre. Yeah. I mean, I we, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, we get in trouble more often putting things out of order, I think, almost in trouble. And we shouldn't. Hey, it, I, I mean, if, we, if it means. Yeah, if I were sitting here no, every day no, and had control no over process. Yeah. <laughs> 
probably would be different. None of us have control over anything. You Next know, on the just, agenda, new business, subdivision amendment, Blackberry Hill Roadmap, R56, slot 3-2. It's in the R2 and the R3 zone. The applicant is Black Dog Realty. Mr. Town Planner. Yes, I do have a memo for you, which you should have in your packet. The applicant, Black Dog Realty LLC, is seeking approval for an amended subdivision plan originally reviewed and approved in 2006 with amendments through 2009. The application was originally reviewed under the standards of a mobile home park, Article 8, Section 8.5 of the Zoning Ordinance. This section of the ordinance indicates that this type of development shall be reviewed under the subdivision standards. The changes being proposed at this time are a reflection of main inland fisheries and wildlife concerns for possible tur turtle habitat. Based on this concern, the applicant is, is it should be adjusting the overall number of lots from 90 to 77. The majority of lots being downsized is around the cul-de-sac Road D, where, a lot, where 12 lots are being taken out of the development with one lot being eliminated at the intersection of roads B and C. They are in the process of reviewing the plan, um, they being in, and will be submitting to DEP for the downsized site location permit. The next steps of the application would be, um, process should be to decide how much additional information you need to review this change, and do you need to hold a public hearing or not on this change. Regardless of the decision above, I would recommend the application be tabled until we receive the DEP revised permit to determine if any additional conditions are required on the plan. Lee J, wasn't there some action taken after 2009? Uh, I remember this coming before us. Maybe it was just to extend it. It just might have been. Um, but I had done some research and I believe I talked with, this goes back in like a year or two. Um, that the approvals, the way the ordinance was written at the time, that these approvals are in place for ever. No, 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 I, I'm not questioning that. But it, it I, has been, I thought it came before us for some re maybe after it was just to make that determination. It might have been, I don't know, and I couldn't find any record of that. Okay. But I, I may have some memories of that, and I think uh, we had a, uh, a planning clerk. Um, and she felt that because it was a phased project, the phasing would continue. And I think she did some, this is maybe what you're talking about, Lee J. Yeah. I think she right. looked at MMA to find that thought. Yeah. And, and it was before the, the ordinance was changed. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not sure if this would cause any changes to this project, but I think a lot of this has to do with the DEP application because it's a big project and there were some uh, sensitive environmental things out, yes. out so in the back. We're waiting for the DEP report. Is that what you're suggesting? DEP, the revised permit. Inland Fisheries and Wildlife would be giving a report to DEP and they are amending their permit through DEP to because they're changing the design of the project. Okay. And they will talk about the changes in the design mm -hmm. with you. Okay. Hi. Hi. Thank you all. Um, my name is Joe Maletti. I'm an engineer with Ambit Engineering, um, representing my client, Mark Phillips, who's in the audience. Um, not to go into re restating what's already been stated, um, project was approved back in 2009. I have no knowledge of it coming back here. I'm not the original engineer on the project. Um, but in 2009, due to the economic conditions at the time, uh, my client chose not to build out the project. Um, permits, mainly state level of permits, site law, stormwater, and other permits lapsed and renewed and lapsed again. Um, and those, some, some, most, many of those permits that I stated, we are working on renewal. Um, the Inland Fisheries and Wildlife did have input on uh, renewal of the of the permits and um, due to new information they have on turtle migration or turtle turtle habitats and um, they they increased the buffer from 250 feet as it was approved in 2009 to 300 feet and that did uh, cause us to have to scale back the project by 13 lots and again those lots are in the northwest part or northeast part of the project up here 
instead of a large loop road around there, we ended up designing a, a cul-de-sac. I would also point out there was one additional, there are 12 around the cul-de-sac, but there's one additional lot that got uh, removed along just at the end of the boulevard, I believe it's road B. Um, we are also addressing um, new requirements for some of the drainage, stormwater treatment and drainage um, under DEP laws. Uh, one being um, we're designing, there's a large culvert on the boulevard located here. Um, it had been a twin three feet by eight foot box culvert. Um, it needs to be a wildlife friendly uh, culvert with a natural bottom. So we are in the process of redesigning that along with the fact that it is now a new reviewer at the state who interprets some of the regulations differently than, than the original reviewer. And so we are just conforming the project to meet uh, that reviewer's interpretation of the rules. It has to do with percent treatment and just how, how, it's, how it's calculated. It's not gonna change the design. And so uh, any of this built at all, or is it all just nothing? No, nothing at all. Okay. What was your intent this evening? Um, I think we would think you need, needed to make a decision whether it needs to have be a public hearing. And if you were to hold a public hearing at the next meeting, we would uh, hope to piggyback that with the uh, public hearing required for the state permitting. There needs to be a public hearing for state permitting. I don't think we're, I mean, we would have to find that application. We would application have to find it complete. complete. We have a lot of steps before We would have to find the application so complete yeah. before scheduling a public hearing. I see. But, I mean, we, there's no reason why we couldn't do that because, I mean, this was reviewed as being complete with 90 lots. Mm. It's now 77. And uh, the, the, the reviewing process mostly, I think, is going to be DEP. Uh, I don't think our comprehensive plan has changed. <laughs> that would cause this to <laughs> Our comprehensive plan has definitely not changed. When do you anticipate those permits? Very soon. Um, we're just wrapping up some of the final details to submit for it. So regarding the completeness issue, because I did take a look at the plan set that is in front of you tonight, um, I mean, it's very detailed, and I would suspect it would be complete if we went through the checklist. Um, so if you felt compelled to find that complete, I could not do that because what I received in order to do your memo was this, which was one sheet, and it just showed the layout. It had none of the topo. It had none of the engineering design. It had nothing. So for me to make to say, oh, it's a complete application at this point, I couldn't do that. But I have seen the plan sets earlier before the meeting. I looked through it. Um, and if you felt compelled to find that complete, you could do so. I have a question. I mean, some things in our land use ordinance have changed since 2009. I know, for example, we have a low impact design requirement now for our subdivisions, right? So, I mean, I don't see a low impact design statement here, so I don't that, think that's it's... All that stuff should be grandfathered because it was initially approved. Yes. Is it? I'm yes. not sure. So we have to review. We, we, we to have to. Out whether it we have to review this as if we're in 2009 with those land use ordinances. Right. Yes. Well, then the public well, like, hearing but, but should be really changes. interesting. <laughs> the only thing that's changing. The only thing that's changing in the design is that cul-de-sac location, right there, and right, the, box, right. the box culvert down right. in this area. Otherwise, the the permit, the approvals that had been granted and previously reviewed are still in place and the changes are being made because DEP is requiring the change. Right. So we can so the low impact design would mm -hmm. apply to the new cul-de-sac. Could. Yeah. But well, we have to, right? Because it, that's a change that needs to be reviewed under the law today. <coughs> Could. Uh, I mean the, the one on the northwest corner has previously been approved. Yes. But I mean this this is this is the change. So we change. have to review the change under existing law today. I would say so. Yeah, you have to remember that State of Maine has a uh, modular home separate law that applies housing. to this, yes. which we've embedded, because we had to, within our land use ordinance. And 
I don't know, and I think you guys up at the state will probably have to review if there's been any changes from 2009 to 2018 or 19. The, the manufactured housing but, regulations, which are embedded, have, were required to be embedded in your ordinance, yeah. as written by the state, are very different than the rest of the regulations because they say that roads shall not be any bigger than 22 feet wide. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have any, some other standards that they say that shall not exceed rather than having the town develop minimums and saying, well, you can go bigger. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that, that we're kind of going to be hemmed in here because of the way the state law is written on manufactured housing uh, review. So I think that it's really important that we're real clear for, for people about um, that we can only review this as per the land use ordinance of 2009, not what is required today, because it would be a little bit different. And I think when we have a public hearing, we need to really, really state that beforehand a lot, because we're going to get this is this is a highly contested project. We've gotten kickback. We've got. I've gotten kickback as a real estate agent that has nothing to do. I don't even know about this thing. I've gotten kickback online because of this project that was approved ten years ago. I've gotten like hate mail because of it, and I had absolutely nothing to do with it, just because I sell real estate. So this is a highly contested project, and we're going to have to do a lot of, um, I think, public relations, honestly around it because of because our hands are basically tied with this we're only we can only review that little cul-de-sac which by the way i see i see nothing wrong i mean you're downsizing it i get it it's already been approved etc cetera, etc cetera. i'm just I, I just think that the uh, the the public side of this we need to make sure that they're very well informed and we're very clear about what's actually going on here that means and we're going to have a public hearing, right? I think so, we should have at least okay. one public hearing. <laughs> All right, so the only reason, if this application back in 2009 was approved six months later, it, we wouldn't even be here because this subdivision would have been gone. This community would have been gone because we have the new ordinance. So that's why it, st it stayed there mm. for 10 years. The only reason that we have to go they have to go back to the state is because those expire and that's the only change that's the real big thing that else that we're looking for besides that i mean is there any we can have a public hearing next in two weeks on this well except for this completed application question but yes well, we, uh, we do we we don't necessarily need to have a public uh, a completed application before a public hearing well the so, public needs to be able to see all this stuff and technically it already is complete I think technically it is. If we're going by 2009 Wait, standards, then it is complete. Is there any possibility that the DEP would require further changes that, than are already in this plan, Lee J? Uh, I don't know. Um, that's a DEP call. And, and that's what I we're going to find have, out. Have hopefully you guys in a couple heard weeks. We've been working with them extensively over the – I mean, I'm, I'm on I'm, – I email people up there almost daily with questions and take a look at this and reviews kind of over the shoulder – by the day well, and where, where there's are not you exactly where today? I'm sorry where are you in, in the process where on the I'm about to wrap up the final piece which is addressing their questions about um, it's the, the culvert final culvert design and um, just a recalculation of the percent treatment of stormwater so the cul-de-sac redesign is done done and approved well it's done I mean I mean, it's, it's, all right. there are no outstanding questions you, you are the ones that approve it <laughs> There, there are no outstanding questions from DEP. No, about no, the change in plan in the no. Sector. We've addressed their concerns in the design. I'd just like to address the question about um, low impact development. Mm -hmm. It was and still is a low impact design around the cul-de-sac area. The cul-de-sac or this area here, it all that runoff drains to a forested buffer, and that is a low impact. Perfect. Um, stormwater yeah. control. We could have a public hearing in two weeks. We can keep the public hearing open. If you don't have your permits back by then, in those two weeks, maybe you do get them back. It would give, this is definitely one of those that we want to have the staff memo. We want to have the <coughs> findings of fact the, and, and all that. And do I, you need to ha see us with approved state permits or can it be a condition of approval? That we have we state. We want permits. this to be. Well, and this money. is what we need to find out because this is 
you can do it either way, but clearly my recommendation is going to be, as it was tonight, to you that you not give final approval until we see the permit from DEP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, I'm Mark Phillips. I'm the applicant. And um, one thing I want to bring out and probably ease your mind, Nicole, is <laughs> this is an over 55 uh, mobile home yeah. uh, project, manufacturing housing. So there's not going to be any kids in the schools. There's going to be no impact to the tax uh, rate. Um, one member of every household has to be at least 55 years of age or older. Uh, the roads are going to be privately owned and maintained, so there's no plowing cost to the town. Um, both the water district and the sewer district want to take uh, possession or control of the water lines and sewer lines when they're done. So that'll be done professionally. Um, we have to build a uh, sewer pump to meet the uh, sewer district's demands at the bottom of uh, at the bottom of the hill there, which is um, kind of overkill because they want to have the capacity to extend sewer up Blackberry Hill Road. Yeah. Maybe, you know, 10, 15, 20 years now, maybe all the way up to Route 4. Um, so the, the public should know that uh, um, there's not going to be, you know, 25 kids loaded in the, uh, the elementary school. It's, it's, it's uh, retired folks. Okay. And, and, um, Which our town desperately needs as a place for people to age in place, and we've done a lot of work as a town to find that out. And mm -hmm. I think that a majority of the townspeople agree. And we didn't really have any opposition uh, when we did the first go around. It was just yeah. a, no, you know, the, we, the we opposition had, opposition had nothing to do with the 55 yeah. and over. It had to do with turtles being out in the back. Well, and yeah. one, one, the, person, the density. one person. Uh, and the other people I have to understand is that you're not dividing the land you are staying a single ownership right. with private roads, right. and you're going to be either leasing or renting the modular homes. So the, the people who own their own homes, um, you know, taxable to the town, yeah. and I'll own the land, and they will lease their, their site yeah. uh, from me. So. Would you be able to come back in two weeks and give a presentation on this? Sure, uh, absolutely. I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I yeah, well, we'd yeah. like to hear. Well, we'd like to hear from. I yeah, mean, I'd like okay. to hear from you mainly yeah. for a public hearing. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yep. yes, we would. And then your idea, Dave, holding that open, because this is going to take a while to filter out to, to the public, and I, I think have the intentions of if we're going to have a presentation by the applicant, uh, really think seriously about holding that open for another two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, just so that, you know, yeah. er everything is out, yeah. out in the open. Okay. Does that sound good? Let's look. That is uh, the 6, 20th. 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 Okay. 6.30. Got a lot of grass in front of your gate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, uh... All right. Keep people out. <laughs> <laughs> on the turtles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. See you in two weeks. All right, next on the agenda is conditional use application. 115 School Street, map U3, lot 42. It's in the R1 zone with frontage on Route 9, and the applicant is William Dane. Turn it over to Lee J. Uh, yep. So William Dane is proposing to change the use from an auto sales facility to an auto repair and detailing operation. I do understand he's now wanting to maintain the sales on the property as well. The applicant will be removing the existing building and putting up a new 30 by 40, and I had put three bay structure. It's actually two bays for repairs and one office area, but it looks like three bays on the plan. Um, as part of the review of this project, the applicant is utilizing a portion of the ordinance in Article 6, Section 6.3 under Note Number 1, which allows for reduced side yard setbacks. The abutter setbacks are 5.82 on the west side and 12.84 on the east side, allowing this property to have a 9.33 sideline setback, which is what is proposed. The applicant is also required to meet the performance standards found in 8.26 of the zoning ordinance, which requires this type of use to be located on either Route 9 or Route 236, which it is located on uh, Route 9. The plan proposes to have a dumpster located at the rear of the property behind the proposed building. 
The board may want to find out if the dumpster is enough to handle any auto parts if necessary or to replace or to replace them. Um, also, will the cars be stored? Where will the cars be stored when waiting for service? A majority of the site is currently gravel and the plan proposed to have the site paved. The planning board may want to have some discussion with the applicant regarding buffering and landscaping as required in sections 7.2 and 7.5 of Article 7. At this time, I do not believe the applicant is proposing any, anything based on the plan. Both properties on either side of the project are residential and should be screened per section 7.2 of Article 7, which requires buffering or screening. The plan calls for both water and sewer to be public and tied into the public systems on Route 9. The plan does not show any signage or lighting. Is the applicant proposing any new signage or lighting for the site? The plan currently have has a typo that should be fixed prior to final approval. And I got typos in my memo too, so. Um, <laughs> or subject to final approval. Note three cites the town of York, not Berwick. Um, this should be adjusted accordingly. Um, the board will not decide if the board will want to decide if additional information is required in order to find the application complete or find it complete and set a date for a site walk and public hearing. Okay, thank you, VJ. <laughs> um, good evening. My name is Ryan McCarthy. I'm with Tidewater Engineering and Surveying. Um, Bill Dame is with me tonight. I'm here to represent him. Um, so Lee J covered a lot of what I was going to present to you, so I, I won't repeat everything. Um, just give you a quick overview. Um, so this property is located on School Street on the left-hand side as you're heading out of town. Uh, you may be familiar with it. It's a, it's a small site. Um, the existing use is uh, used car sales. Uh, there is a, a small building on the property as well. Um, Bill's looking to maintain that as used car sales, but add a, add a building, a 40 by 30 foot building, which would have two uh, repair bays for, for vehicle, um, vehicle repairs and detailing. Um, this is a pretty small lot, so we are taking advantage of the, the reduction in the side setbacks for the building. There's not many places this building can go, so we've tucked it up into the, the upper left-hand side as you're looking at the plan. Um, se <laughs> over 70% of this property is currently um, impervious. You've got, majority of it is, is pavement. Um, there's a big gravel area and <coughs> building, and then there's an existing slab for, uh, I'm not sure if there was an old building there at some point or a garage. Um, but in any case, with the proposed design, we aren't going to be increasing that lot coverage any more than it already is. Um, it's a non-conforming situation, so we don't want to make that any worse. Um, we are proposing a dumpster behind the building. Um, Mr. Dame, he owns a repair shop in South Berwick as well, so he's very familiar with what he needs for dumpster storage um, for a site of this size. Um, again, it's a very small site, so you, you really don't need a big dumpster for, for his use. Um, as far as screening goes, we haven't proposed anything. We want to come before you, um, start the dialogue, and hear what you have for comments. On one side, on the north side of the property, or the right-hand side as you're looking at the plan, there is a fence that was recently replaced um, that goes along the residential property to the north. Um, that certainly can ex be extended back further if, if you so choose. Um, utilities for the building, those will be connected into both public water and sewer, so we won't have a septic system here. Um, the signs, there is an existing sign at the property. It's a, uh, it's a pole-mounted sign out at the front. Um, I've added it to the plan so you can see where that is right, right here. The applicant is looking to maintain that sign. He doesn't want to change it, but he does want to add a building-mounted sign. Um, as far as lighting goes, the existing structure that's on the building now has lights on all four sides. Um, those lights stay on 24-7 for security reasons associated with, with used car sales. You don't want people breaking into the vehicles at nighttime. If you don't have lights, you're apt to do that. Um, the proposed building will have um, building-mounted lights as well. Um, on, the front, the, on the front side, the north side, and then on the back towards the dumpster. Um, those lights will also be on 24-7. And um, as far as vehicles, where they would be parked on the site, um, traditionally with, with uh, vehicle sales lots, you don't have striped um, spaces. You maneuver the vehicle, vehicles as you see fit. So the vehicles that would be for sale will be in the front of the property, 
and uh, traditionally the, any other repairs, the vehicles that will be repaired will be in the back. Um, so with that, I'd like to answer any questions you may have. Just one thing on this, uh, one thing I noticed here, and I could tell because I live in the neighborhood behind it, it's the, the, uh, the abutter actually to the north there is the town of Berwick because that Heritage Woods, Woods LLC, they deeded that over to the town after the uh, Penny Pond subdivision was, was completed. Okay. Back in 2010, so that's now the town of Berwick. So, so that's that was open space. That was designated. It's open. It's yeah. It's six acres of open space. Okay. Sorry. When I was saying property to the north, I meant to the east. Sorry. This property here. Yeah. No. No. Speaking. I'm just okay. saying that the one up here is just the town of Berwick. Gotcha. Well, we'll make that update. When did you say that was done? Did it? Was it to 2010. The town? I think the assessor's map still had it shown as, as that name, but we'll, we'll certainly make the update. That's why they always cover themselves with now or formally or NF. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The new sign that you'd like to put on the building, is that going to be like a lighted sign or is it going to be just a, like a just, just, you know, building sign just, you know, with no, with no lighting attached? Um, that's a good question for Bill. I, I, I think with the, well, when illumination would be nice. Um, that being said, I don't, you know, I like getting along with my neighbors. <laughs> I like having good neighbors on both sides of me. I don't want to do anything that's offensive to anybody. So um, that's discussion on that. I think the home to the left of this is for sale right now. Is that true? We're facing the property, yeah. Okay. It's just, that one's for sale. Do you have, a, like, a sketch-up of the building? I don't, like no. Like a metal building? Oh, metal or wood frame. I really haven't decided. I want to get through this before I can. Yeah. Wasted any effort and time onto that. Do you re do you require us to submit building elevations? I don't as part think of this we process? require it, but some people submit it, and it's nice to see, especially if we have a public hearing. They're you know, your next door neighbors might want to know what the building is going to look like. That's going next to sure. their house. It doesn't have to be an engineering document. Yeah. Nine yeah. feet away from their property line. I mean, it's a 30 by 40 rectangle. Um, it's going to have one gable, the lengthwise, the the length. The long side of the building, so um, it's 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 going to be pretty traditional. Yeah. yeah. As for the lighting and signage, I think you heard enough discussion about lights tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Downward shining on the yes the, on the sign. Dark not, sky friendly. Dark sky, dark sky friendly, lights shielded. No lights. Cut off at ninety degrees. Yeah. Got it. Yep. No backlighted signs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Point five light feet onto the neighbor's property. Yep. Foot candles. <laughs> point five foot candles. Yep, yeah. Certainly. Whatever Zero it is. Zero at the property line, Ryan. Yeah. Zero. At Zero at the property. Line. Okay. All of that. Do you know? Do, um, do you require us to submit the fixtures? It would be nice to see them. Yes. Most people do submit that. Sort. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, the number of vehicles, is there like a maximum number of vehicles that you could expect here? Because you are kind of in between two houses and I'm trying to think of how many vehicles I normally see over there. Usually like four, maybe five. Ten. There's about 10. Yes, it yeah. looks like four or five as I'm driving by. So that's good, but I don't live next door to that. Um, so certainly the site constraints and the, the, the maneuverability on the yeah. property, you know, having to have cars come in to be yeah. serviced, uh, that's really going to limit the amount that yeah. you'll see on the I think a site property. walk will help, actually, because I don't think I've ever, like, Definitely. walked out there. The, uh, the lines, the parallel lines that you show uh, on the Route 9 yeah. side of the lot, do, are those the for sale cars? That's where they would be. I'm not familiar with that's the lines that you're talking that's about. Where you, when you see cars for sale, that's yeah. where you see yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Where do you see those, the lines yeah. you're talking about? We have a different, the bottom left, the bottom right hand plan corner of, oh, of the yeah. property. Oh, okay. You have a different plan than me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got that it. makes it tricky. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Yep. So Looking there's a yours. there's a fence on the right property that goes, you know, about halfway back. Yes. Okay. And there's nothing on the other side. What do you mean by nothing on the there's other no, side? There's no, there's no there, buffer. Is it there's no buffer between the properties? No. Okay. No trees. No, no wood line or anything. No trees. No no wood line. It's it's. Do we have the same plan that you do? No. All no. No. You don't. No. 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 So. I know, that's what I was saying. It makes it's it a little hard tricky. to find this complete. Well, which is the right one? Is yours? I'm assuming yours is the right one. It's more updated. 
it's this one is more updated to address some of Lee Jay's comments. Okay. Um, I think it's missing the the parking lines that you're seeing there. And the sign. No, and the sign isn't the on sign this. Isn't one. On the ours. sign's not on there either. We've updated the note that said York to Berwick. Um, we added the lighting to the to the building as well. We did that based on I got the memo just a few days ago, and we for the display we want to give you an updated one. Mm -hmm. If you had questions on it. I'm the one with the up outdated plan. <laughs> Oh, we, yeah, haven't we haven't submitted. We haven't we, submitted we this to you. We have outdated plans. plans as well. <laughs> yeah. I would just like to say that um, it would be nice, and I know Lee Jay is very good at this. Just that it would be nice if the building looked more right. like it fits in with a, a New England town. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's maybe, not a requirement. It would be really nice, though. Probably with, you mentioned Gables, one of you mentioned Gables, that would be nice. Make it look residential as much as possible. Yeah. Much like the McDonald's in Freeport. <laughs> <laughs> it's our favorite McDonald's. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I know Lee Jay, so Lee Jay um, had a lot to do with the, uh, the Hannaford going in in North Berwick and the design on that. And so it looks like there's, win it's, not, it's a big, just a big freaking rectangle, but it looks like there's windows on the outside. If they're not real windows. <laughs> Probably wasn't a big deal. And the Dollar General, I think, somewhere down there, too, yes. or something like that. Yes. Same thing. Like, there's things you can do. It's not that big of a deal. Sure. But it certainly would fit in a lot better and would look pretty. And you live in Berwick, so you know. Yeah. 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 I don't want to put up a big commercial-looking building yeah. next to somebody's houses. I like both my neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> I like me if I do that. Yeah. Because yeah. if you were a quarter mile down the road, closer into town, you would have to fall You'd underneath to. <laughs> the village design yeah. standards. I was just thinking, like, I was just thinking, man, I wish this fall, fall under <laughs> because village Because we stopped design. at Logan Street. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's clear that a, a you know, ranch-style building, you know, and then if he ever decides to sell, he can convert it to a house. Yeah. <laughs> With a two-car garage. Yeah, a studio with two-car garage. <laughs> yeah, it would be certainly. Any other questions? No, I think I think I am so excited for the site walk actually. So is do we like, no, a couple really. things that we want to do tonight? Yeah. We want to find the application whether or not it's complete, and then schedule a um, a site walk and a public hearing. So again, just as a reminder, to find an application complete and a difference between whether they've submitted the information that you need um, or that is required of him to um, go forward is different than any particular issues you may have within the design. Mm. Correct. Yeah. Um, so just keep that in, in mind, separation. I mean, I think for the purposes of the conditional use process and the plan that they've provided, you could probably find it complete and then, you know, dealing with specifics like the lighting design. Um, and the building design, those are particular issues that yeah. you want to discuss with him. So. Has this updated one been submitted to you or to James? No. No. No, it has not. No. We just, we literally just did this the other day, yesterday, because we got the memo two days ago. So the only thing I don't see that would make this application complete, looking, just looking at the checklist, not to beat a dead horse, is the low impact design, which we put into place for a reason, and a lot of people try to uh, are kind so, of skirting it. So the only thing I'm going to say about yeah. that is that um, they're not proposing any more impervious surface that's there now. I right. agree. So I think that that is a that is not a completeness issue, but a discussion for you to have about whether or not. Well, I don't see a written statement documenting proposed low impact design for the site, which is a completeness issue. And Lee J, can you? As I, as I understand this, and I may be totally wrong, it's not the first time in history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> we're, we're taking a gravel area and making it a paved area. Yes. Wouldn't that increase? No, under the state, for, for the purposes of using state regulations, DEP for stormwater, if it's compacted gravel, compacted dirt, um, anything of that nature, that is considered impervious. It's all going to run off the same. That's right. Okay. That's right. Nicole, can you point out to me the section you were talking about? Yep. On, so on the actual application, on the back side of it, number six on the checklist is okay. a written statement documenting proposed low impact design for the gotcha. site. 
We Thank literally you. don't require you to have a low impact design. We need a written statement saying that you considered it and what you considered. Your, or request York a waiver. has the same or request, or request a, a waiver. Yes. Um, no, I don't. It, oh, I don't think you you can't think request you can get a, waiver a waiver for the application. About something. Yeah, you just have to think you about it. Get a waiver it. from doing something. You can you request can't get a waiver, a waiver from, from thinking do, about it. Well, this this is true, but yeah. I mean, I'm assuming that right. He'd be he'd be requesting a waiver based on the fact that, you know, the site is what. Well, I'm not going to tell him what. Well, to York say. York has the same requirement, and um, so I'm sure you've done work over there. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. Absolutely. And, and write it down. And we tell will. us what you thought. And we'll right be like, wow, that was a great it. idea. Yes. Rain barrel, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Rain barrel, so got the it. Lot, the lot Rain barrel. Uh -huh. The lot coverage, Nicole, yes. will be 71.9%, where currently it is 72.2%. See? So it's, it's a small improvement. It's a low impact development. Right. But right. that's oh, not, our that's job that's isn't to write it. Design. Their oh, job is to do that. <laughs> I'm just saying that this is the application. It, th this is what's required. And That's I, all. And I still don't and agree just, that yeah. fluffy gravel will move water into the ground much better I'm, than asphalt. I'm telling you how Next time you go to Augusta, you disagree with the state. That. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll certainly provide that statement. Um, and I think we could, I think we could no. vote your application complete and expect yeah. that statement at the next meeting. That, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> When, when we were doing it for North Borwick Auto Center, that issue came up, and I thought we made a change about what's permeable and what isn't permeable. Impervious surface, under your definition, the total area of a parcel that, that consists of building and associated construction facilities or areas that will be covered with a low permeability material, such as asphalt or concrete, and areas such as gravel, roads, and unpaved parking areas that will be compacted through design or used to reduce their permeability. So it is considered impervious. That is on page 12. Well, I move that we find this application complete with the applicant providing us their low impact design written statement at the next meeting. Because that's the only thing I see. And missing. the updated plan. And the updated plan. Can we get a second? I'll second it. Okay. Now further we can dis discuss it. <laughs> discussion. Updated plan, low impact design statement. I want to consider the. Uh, uh, it's too early for this. I would like. like to I would like a consideration at least, or some kind of a sketch of just the building, just so I. I'm a visual person. I would love to be able to see it. That's all. Thank and you. at the public hearing, your bu butters are going to want to. Would see we it. like to schedule a site walk for the twentieth? I'd love to do at that. Five thirty. Is that all right? That good? Can you handle it? Sure. What's the date, Dan? Uh, six twenty. It does. Yep. Um, five thirty, Dave. Yeah, five thirty. Cool. Yeah. Could you tell me again? You said find a complete with low impact development statement and what was the and the update? updated plan. Updated plan. plan. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yep. Besides the nice looking building. I have a feeling a screening will be important with a garage that's yeah. working versus just a car. Right. Yeah. For the abutters. I would yes. definitely think that some some sort of barrier would be necessary. Yeah. I have a oh, feeling. Oh, so I'm sorry. We have a motion and a second. Oh, yeah. We vote on this. So this is motion and a second for application being complete. Further discussion. All in favor? Okay. That's five zero. All right. There we go. I have a feeling you're going to do a good job on it. I have a good feeling about this. We'll see you on the 20th at the site at 530. 530. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the review and approval of findings of fact. These, we, uh, looking back in the minutes here, I had to refresh my memory because it was three weeks ago. We did, we approved all of these. Yes, um, you did. There were typos that I needed yeah. to correct for you, and that's what I've done. So that's just. Three weeks kills me when. We don't have me, and in Paul, it just kills him even worse. And we can't <laughs> meet I, I went back to the minutes to see what happened. <laughs> right. So these are just for a record. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe you will find at the on the last page of each one of these that you know the um, on coffin. The only vote you took, but the application was approved five to zero with no conditions. Um, so all of these have that record. Right. Of those votes. I believe I just needed to correct some with typos. The, with the changes. correct date, too. That's correct. Um, on um, Paul Venuti, and the plans are here for you to sign as well. 
Um, you did approval of findings of fact 5-0, approval of conditions of approval 5-0, and approval of the application 5-0. I did have to make a change to the wording on the maintenance of the um, Is driveway. Is that Yes. Did we do these one at a time, though? Yes. Okay. Yes. So they're already approved, but I'm are just, we reapproving them? We, no. No. no, oh, no okay. <laughs> we're just we we had them. discussions yes. about okay. certain okay. things. Okay, we're just looking at right. Yeah. right. Okay. So on the Venuti issue, um, Jeff and I had, Jeff um, Oliva and I had um, communicated, and what we did was we made the condition regarding the maintenance of the driveway um, say that the property owner, not Paul Venuti or not the business, the property owner for tax map 70 lot 12-1, otherwise known as 357 Portland Street, will be responsible for all future maintenance and upkeep of the driveway. That way, whoever it changes hands to is responsible. It's not going to be dropped, a ball so dropped. That's condition three then? That is correct. And it said for all the future maintenance and upkeep of the driveway. Yep. I, I think you almost have to distinguish between the common driveway and the individual driveway. Because it's common as you drive in, the left goes to Venuti. Right. We don't know who's going to be on the right yet. That's correct. But so. the owner of tax map whatever mm. is responsible for that all of that. Yeah, for all of that. Even Which, that's what Paul Venuti agreed to the last okay. meeting. I can add, as shown on the plan, if you want to delay, you can still sign this. It's not the signature page. I can update that and ship it back again. Yeah, yeah, I think on findings of fact, you can note it in and just. Yeah. I yeah. think the wording is better if it's just that they are agreeing <coughs> to the maintenance of the, driveway. the shared dr portion of the driveway. Because that, that was the contested area. They're, I mean, obviously, they're going to take care of their driveway on their property and the people on the other side are going to take care of the driveway on their property. The contested was the shared driveway and the fact that the people on the left were going to be using it significantly more mm -hmm. than proposed on the right. So the shared driveway is what they're going to be maintaining, <coughs> not everybody else's stuff. So I can change it to say right at the end, uh, responsibility for all the future maintenance and upkeep of the shared portion of the driveway. That'll do it. Back to the drawing board. That's a, <laughs> the drawing is done. That's a quick one. But, but if we note that findings of yeah. fact have but, been amended. But right. the yep. copy you have, you can right still right. sign um, because it's not the signature page that needs to be changed. And I'll just change that and ship it back to James. Um, and then the last one is, it's actually Curtis Land Development, which was Alley's Way. Um, and. I don't believe that any changes were actually required, but the... I, I would beg to differ, E.J. Oh. Uh, on the findings of fact? Yep. Um, for, I think you're going to have to add something for 1112, 1114, and 1116, because there's no... Um, for example, on 1112, we did grant a waiver for a hydro geological analysis. Yep, you'll find that um, on the on the next page, just above 11.13. Shouldn't 13. the findings of fact say the waiver was granted? Yeah, it does say the applicant I mean, has requested a waiver. Otherwise, you have to go back somewhere else to... Or a waiver was granted. A waiver was granted, yeah. I mean, it is a fact of that project. And ditto with 11.14, there is no um, determination after 11.14 on identification of freshwater wetlands, which they did have um, on, the, on the project. They are shown yeah, on the that's, plan. That's, that's my, clearly, I yep. missed that. And then if you look at the, the last one would be 11.16, it goes on to the next page. Um, there should be some determination before you start 11.17 which has a determination. So, so those three, I think you should add, you know, what the results, what the findings of fact were on those items. You mean for 1116? Uh, Reservation 11, 16, dedicated yeah, just before 1117, yes. right above that yes. line. Other than that, they're perfect. So I will add a statement there. Well, they are very imperfect at this point. <laughs> no. Yeah. Could Not be worse. Perfect. 
Great. Paul needed Dino's to go out and buy Dino's another red pen after that. Wait, do we need Paul's been doing his homework. Approved, eh? Yes. So yes, they're all approved. Yeah, they're all approved. We're just, yes. Don't we have to approve the findings of fact? You already have. We already yeah. have. You with the changes, the, you did them with the changes as requested. Let's not do that anymore. I know. Let's not do that anymore. I don't like that. Yeah. These were yeah. just for our review. I don't like that. What well, he made the change. I, I so like review. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something tonight um, that I think that um, I need to have a conversation with James because based on things that you discussed tonight and things that were at the beginning of the meeting um, and based on findings of fact, we have been pumping projects through this process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to slow that down. Agreed. Agreed. And in order to slow it down, it means just because someone submits something doesn't mean it's going to the next planning board meeting. Yeah. And I need to make yes. that clear to James, and I yeah. need your support if yep. that's the case. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, yeah, I, I'm probably going to, because of the way that I have gotten some materials and not other materials, I'm probably going to have to lean on him to actually find the application complete to go forward to you folks mm -hmm. um, so that I can then write a memo based on the technical review. So I'm going to need to have this conversation with him. 100% um, agreed. And, and that is unfortunately, but fortunately, slow. it's going to slow projects down a little bit. It would um, surprise me if you poll the planning board people. At least I personally feel that yep. we do rush things sometimes. Yes. yes. And we're not supposed to. Yes. Well, yes. we didn't schedule a public hearing for that last application that came through. We could have. We could have did a site walk and a public hearing the same night, but mm -hmm. there's no need to. Yeah. Because, clearly, I mean, one of my personal concerns is I'm getting spoon-fed some material, and it's like a couple of days before the meeting, and I'm like, that's why some of these things, yeah. we haven't gotten revised memos on because it's like... For instance, the one application tonight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh. There was a time when we insisted on submissions to the planner uh, being a week before. Two weeks is what the ordinance says. Two weeks. Well, I think we should stick to by the ordinance, yeah. I, I, I totally so agree. We never, would have, we never would have heard the last application yeah. tonight. Probably not. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll make sure. And we would have got the revised plans already. I will send James right. something as well. Well, in the earlier one, there was nothing to talk about. Yeah, exactly. I'll that come was, in and talk to him. As well. That would be appreciated, but Absolutely. I will also have that conversation yeah. just to say, look, we need to we need to change our process. Um, we got to go by the ordinance, and, and I mean, and, I, and we should note for the record, the first meeting in July is July the fourth. I'm going to guess we're not going to meet that. We night. never meet the first week of July. Except when we do. <laughs> That's right. Except the last two years. <laughs> the last time. Well, I can because, tell you the last because two years I, I will have. also say for the record, we actually have bylaws that nobody reads. Right. Uh, but in any case, uh, as we're scheduling things, we should keep that in mind. Yes. After the 20th, the next meeting isn't going to be until July 18th. Yes. That'll really screw you up, Dave. So you got to get bylaws <laughs> somewhere else except for the planning board meeting. <laughs> All right, does um, anybody have anything else before the adjournment? I have one more informational item, and that is, um, again, with the low-impact design stuff, uh, and uh, specifically the the past few applications we've seen, and I'm not seeing low impact design written at all. And I know I've heard I've heard in the planning department room before it being said, just talking to applicants. Oh, you know, you just have to think about it. You don't have to write it, you know, or just write it down. But you don't have to do it, whatever. And that's good. I would like to see us moving more toward more lo actual low impact design and you know there was no low impact design written statement with the fire department um, application that we saw and that's a really huge project that's impacting a lot of wetlands if you remember when we did this initially we had that debate yeah and at that time it was decided to just have the think about period. right right i agree i think would beyond think about but a second thing that i think we ought to do is not limit it to just the question of uh water runoff at one time, we started started to think about things like sustainable, low, you know, energy issues, renewable energy Green issues. Roofs, so we've talked um, about, you know, roof gardens. Yep, I mean, but yep. I think there are issues beyond simply water runoff okay. that we ought to consider on low impact design. So here's what I'm going to say. Good. Um, I don't I don't disagree with you at all, um, and a lot of towns are starting to go in that direction. However. However, I would see those types of 
fairly significantly large amendments coming after we get a new comprehensive plan done, which <coughs> as I understand where um, there's money budgeted in this budget cycle, um, if approved, to start a comp plan process. Which would take at least two years? Um, I'm, I would hope no more than two years, but short of having stuff in your current comprehensive plan to support that type of stuff, mm. um, it's a little sketchy. You know, I mean, if you're going to push someone to a developer to do something like that that could be very costly and it's not in your comprehensive plan if they chose to challenge it then you're kinda on shaky ground I'd rather have us have <coughs> the comp plan talk about supporting those types of efforts I agree I, do it. I would like the planning department just to take it a little bit more seriously yes. when dealing oh. with the applicants and that was my point is that if the planning department comes to the applicants and says, hey, your application isn't complete, the planning board isn't going to find it complete um, because you don't have a low impact design, I have, I have stolen mics, um, then, um, you know, it kind of trickles down and, and they'll take it more seriously. But I think that I feel we may have been slacking a little bit or it's getting past us and I'm just want to just make us all aware yeah, but of I that think again. We, I would you're take at, a step we gloss over it. Yeah. I would we request gloss. in the future if item number six is not completed, it not be submitted to us for any action, period. Because that is clearly an incomplete, not completely filled out application. That doesn't even get close. And I think we, I think we voted the fire station complete, and I didn't see. Did we vote fire station the, complete the, application? No, that was, they, were, that was they weren't coming in. Oh, that was just a workshop. Okay, that was good. just a workshop. Okay, good, yes. good, 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 yes. good. Well, I'll tell you what. In the absence of having a full-time town planner here who can look the stuff over all the time, I think what I'll do is I'll go in on Monday or Tuesday and I'll review everything with James, and then if we have to pull something from the agenda because it, the, section six is missing, then that's what we do. Mm. Well, we can take turns doing that, yeah, and going in there and just and going in there and looking at everything and saying, "Well, we don't, and, and, you know, well, we don't have this and this that and, we can't and if move we forward." Took the time at a meeting also not only make sure they considered, uh, you know, low impact design, but if we talked about it for, you know, spend two minutes talking about it, so that people know what it is we're talking about, what is discuss it a little bit. Um, Move on after you've done that. Just give them some ideas. Yeah, well, that's yeah. it. Give them but, some but ideas. But there's no yeah. reason that now we no. can't interpret that to include renewable energy in the, in the thinking about stuff. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Could, we could do that right now. Just yes. Now that's yeah. what you're thinking about. I just don't. I, I, I would just suggest going slow on that because development of standards and those sorts of things, one, are costly to an applicant. Um, and if we don't have a lot of supporting documentation or much so supporting well, but documentation. But at this stage, all we're doing is asking to tell yes, us what correct, you're thinking about. Correct. That's all. Yep. I mean, as I drive around, I see a whole lot more buildings with solar panels than I used to. Yeah. Well, and as you, somebody's thinking about and, things. And as you know, at least in your, in your village area, um, that is in your design standards, um, clearly recommending that those types of things, that green roofs and yeah. um, solar panels be on flat roofed buildings mm -hmm. um, in your village area or so. One informational item, there's an election on Tuesday. <laughs> so I haven't seen much posted about it, but I keep telling people. It was posted today on the town's Facebook page, I know. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Good. I shared that. Glad somebody's but, but not all of us actually go to Facebook. <laughs> well, well, I'm now not sure that in the statutes of Maine, Facebook is high on the list. <laughs> well, I could be wrong. Know. I could be wrong. You know for sure there is an election on Tuesday, and anybody that. watching, and it's in the record, so can't say we didn't tell people there's an election on Tuesday. That's and right. If anybody wants Noah off the planning board, vote for Here's him for selectman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if you want me to stay right here, have a massive write-in campaign. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Shouldn't be electioneering. Definitely. All right. Anybody else? Uh, only tomorrow is National Donut Day. Go out and hoist one to a, to a friend you know. <laughs> Does Dunkin' Donuts still do the free donuts? On yeah, donut day? yeah. Some places we, do. We don't have a donut shop in Berwick. Not yet. Anybody else? I'll make a motion. We adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? All right. There we go.